Hey there folks, Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to present our ultimate guide to Puerto Vallarta, the beachfront vacation capital of Mexico's west coast. In this video, we'll cover all the cool things you want to see and do in the Puerto Vallarta area, from remote beaches to the south, to the funky beach towns to the north, and everything in between. We'll give you tons of things to consider, like the top tourist sites, the best hikes, the most popular day trips, really, really local dining options, and more. All along with their locations called out on maps. You're going to enjoy it, I promise. Okay, let's go. First up, just a little background of Puerto Vallarta and its surrounding area. PV, as it's commonly known, is a beachfront resort town first developed in the 1960s. It's the primary resort town on the west coast of Mexico, and it's in the state of Jalisco and just on the border with the state of Nayarit. Most development is centered on the wondrous Banderas Bay, the biggest bay in Mexico and one of the biggest and deepest bays in all the world. This bay is an aquatic wonderland where hundreds of humpback whales come for their season from December through March and thousands of turtles also nest on these beaches from May through October. On top of that, schools of dolphins and giant manta rays inhabit these waters year round. Over the years, the area has expanded greatly and today the regional population exceeds a quarter million people. So don't get the idea that PV is a small fishing village. When people say they're coming to Puerto Vallarta or PV, they can mean anywhere from Yalapa to the south, to Nuevo Vallarta and Putamita to the north. And in terms of those beaches, the PV area has some really nice ones, just as nice and perhaps even more beautiful than the choices on the Caribbean side of Mexico. But don't expect the underwater life and snorkeling to be as good. The water is colder here and snorkeling is not as great. But for most people, the dolphins, rays, turtles, and humpback whale season more than make up for it. Also, be aware there are no Mayan ruins or big nature park attractions like the Caribbean side. Here, you can expect a much more laid back kind of Mexico feel, except for those crowds and the traffic. Finally, just one more point, and just so you know, Puerto Vallarta is well known as the premier resort area in Mexico for the LGBT community. Now, let's talk about the best times to visit Puerto Vallarta. The best times to visit, as well as the most expensive, is from November through the spring break period into April. Not surprisingly, this also happens to be the best weather in Puerto Vallarta. PV has a two-season tropical climate with a long seven-month dry period between November and May and a more wet summer season from June through October. Prime season winter temperatures are close to ideal with lows typically in the 60s and highs in the 70s. The shoulder seasons are also quite nice, but summers can be difficult when temperatures can hover in the mid-90s and feel even hotter with the humidity. One of the best things about Puerto Vallarta is that it's a convenient destination to get to, with many flights from the U.S. taking less than three hours. Then, once you arrive, the airport is within five miles of downtown, and almost all lodging options up and down the coast are within a 20-mile drive. Unfortunately, the traffic has gotten really bad over the years, so that five miles can take you up to 45 minutes, so unless you really need a car, we recommend just using local taxis, Uber, and even the local buses. The local buses might seem intimidating at first, but they're really simple, fun, and cheap too, at only 10 pesos per trip. And yes, they are safe. Don't be afraid to give them a try. Finally, just a pro tip here. All Ubers, Lyft, and the lowest price taxis from the airport must be accessed by way of a pedestrian bridge just a few minutes walk to the left as you exit the airport building. Only white federal taxis are allowed directly on the airport and they're notably more expensive. 
Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get to the top things to see and do in and around Puerto Vallarta. I'll organize everything from south to north and group all your options into four distinct areas. South of Puerto Vallarta Town, Puerto Vallarta Town proper, the Marina and Nuevo Vallarta areas, and the Northern Beach Towns. First up, on the south end of the bay below Puerto Vallarta Town itself, there are a number of great beaches, sites, and hikes to consider. Here are just a few ideas. The first beach you'll come to south of town is Conscious Chinas Beach. It's very different than the main beaches along the Malacan as this beach is really a series of small sandy coves broken up by rocky outcroppings with various options running for almost a kilometer. Each one a beautiful choice for your time where good tide pools and snorkeling can be found. After this beach, you'll pass a number of other beautiful beaches until you come to perhaps the most famous beach in the Puerto Vallarta area, Miss Maloya Beach. This beach is well known for being the setting of the famous 1964 film, The Night of the Iguana, with Richard Burton, and was what started the whole Puerto Vallarta tourist trend in the first place. This beach is actually a cove populated with a big resort, some beach restaurants, and a number of water activity services. And one of the biggest things to do here is to hire a small boat captain to take you out to Los Arcos Marine Reserve, just outside this cove, and you'll see it on your drive down. Los Arcos, or the Arches, is a small collection of rocky islands which are a protected breeding ground for pelicans, boobies, and other seabirds, and it's a popular snorkeling and diving destination. Leaving this beach and driving another four miles further south, you'll come to Boca del Tomatlan. This is a great starting point for all the other beaches further south, which you can't get to by car. More on this town in just a bit, but turning left here and driving four more miles up into the mountains will bring you to Vallarta Botanical Gardens. We didn't actually visit these gardens, but they do get a lot of press and consistently rate as one of the top botanical gardens in North America. So, if you're into such things, maybe give it a shot. Now, back to Boca de Tamatlan and those remote beaches. At the very southern end of the bay, there's a string of small, beautiful, remote beaches accessed only by local boats or a remote coastal hike. Boat rides to these beaches can be had from the main Los Meritas Pier on the Malacan back in town, as well as from a small pier in this village. The cost of the boat ride depends on the beach you go to, which pier you start from, and how many people you have, but the fee ranges from a low of $5 to a high of about $30 each way. Anyways, boats leave as early as 9 a.m. and the last boats return around 5 p.m. The boat ride is a very nice scenic way to see this remote coast as well as chill out on a great beach. But if you're up for some adventure, our recommendation is to do the famous Boca de Tamatlan coastal hike and then take a boat back for your return. More on how to do this hike later at the end of this section. The first remote beach you'll come to along this coast is Colomitos Beach. Its claim to fame is that it's said to be Mexico's smallest beach. Judge for yourself. Anyways, it's a fun experience, but I wouldn't spend all day here. Pro tip, there's one restaurant here with overpriced food, but it's a cool destination, especially for sunsets when you need to make a reservation. From here, you'll continue along the coast as you pass a number of beautiful but lesser known beaches, each an awesome destination in itself, until you come to, relatively speaking, the populated beach of Playa Los Animas. This narrow beach has a number of restaurants and beach bars along with water sports activities and it's a good place to spend at least a half day chilling out. Further down the coast still is Playa Quimixto. 
It's a smaller, rocky, secluded beach along with a small local village. Here there are horses and guides for hire to take visitors through a small canyon to a series of waterfalls. Past a couple more no-name beaches and you'll come to Yalapa Beach, the most popular beach after Los Animas. Yalapa now has a few hotels and bars, but it still remains a tropical beachfront paradise. And it's famous for its 30-minute hike to Yalapa Falls. Now, getting back to that awesome hike I recommended at the beginning of this section. It's called the Boca de Tamatlan to Las Animas Coastal Hike. And it's an absolutely awesome two mile hike out along a rugged coast to Las Animas Beach. But it's not for everybody. It's a somewhat challenging hike and there are some narrow walkways and small cliffs to transit along the way. Nonetheless, if you've got a bit of adventure in you, it's a great hike and will take you about two hours. We've made a separate video on this hike if you want to do it so check it out to learn more. Overall though, we can say this is one of the best beach hikes we've ever done. This is our walkway that we have to go around to, maybe a foot and a half wide. Oh, here we go. That's a long way down there, babe. Okay, moving on to our second section, we come to the main hub of all lodging, dining, and entertainment options, Puerto Vallarta town itself. This is where everything started back in the 1960s, and today this area has a multitude of large beachfront resorts, along with hundreds of bungalows and VRBO options, and enough things to keep you busy here for days. But the biggie here, in the center of tourist attractions in Puerto Vallarta, is probably the Malacan. The Malacan is a one and a half mile beachfront walking promenade from Playa Los Muertos in the south to Hotel Rosita and the Millennia statue in the north. Along the Malacan, you can find a multitude of dining and nightlife options, tons of shopping, street performers, multiple sculptures, and of course, some great beach activities. Most all the tourist sites are within a few blocks of the Malacan, so it's a great place to start things off. Wander around, explore, and enjoy yourself. Check things out both in the day and at night. And once you're ready to wander around the town beyond the Malacan and explore, here are some top suggestions, moving from the south to the north. First up, at the bottom of Puerto Vallarta town, is Playa Muertos Beach and its beach clubs. It's definitely the top beach for chilling out during the day and you'll certainly find a lot of people day drinking and taking up beach chairs. At the north end of this beach is the picturesque Los Muertos Pier. It's beautiful, particularly at night, but it's also functional as it's the primary pier for local boat captains to give tours and rides to nearby beaches and snorkel tours. The streets just off this area into the town are also known as the Romantic Zone. Here, the area south of the Kuala River is full of dining, bars, art galleries, and LGBT-centered activities. It's certainly the most interesting part of town to walk around and maybe grab a bite to eat. And for this, we'll give you a recommendation on a little known place later in the video. In this area is also the Lorazo Cardenas Park and it's worth a stop. For obvious reasons, as you'll see, it's also known as the Tile Park. Take a quick walk around to admire the unique mosaic designs and consider it your open-air art gallery. Continuing north, you'll cross the small Kuala River and come to more sites to consider in the Old Town area. But first up, directly on the river, is the Kuala Market. Here there are a number of restaurants along with many local artisans and knick-knack shops. It's worth a walk through just off the Malacom. 
and our suggestion here is to walk through the entire area and then take the stairs up to your left near the end. This will bring you to another famous Puerto Vallarta site called the Casa Kimberly Hotel and the Elizabeth Taylor Bridge. Today, the two buildings on either side of this small pedestrian bridge are a hotel, but they were originally two separate love nests for Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor back in the 1960s and 70s. It's an interesting place to stop with some interesting history to explore. From here, head back down towards the beach in Malacan and come to the Church of Our Lady of Guadalupe. It's a small but beautiful church and it's the town's primary religious center and inside's worth a look. Plus there are often locals selling their wares outside. In this old town area, there are also a number of art galleries which have their own old town art walk every Wednesday night from 6 to 10 p.m. during the season. Also in this area are some really local authentic dining options, which I'll get to later. But one more big daytime activity to do here is to hike up to the Cross Viewpoint Tower or the Mirador Cerro de la Cruz. Although this hike is all uphill, it's short and pretty easy at less than one mile and less than 15 minutes. And the hike up through this part of town is really nice and of course, the views from the top of the tower are simply awesome. Even though it's an uphill hike, everyone can do it, and there's a small restaurant at the top to grab a drink and take a break once you've made it. Pro tip, it's best to do this hike in the morning, not only to avoid the midday heat, but also because the sun will be rising behind you as you take in your views. Perhaps the best advice we can give you for downtown Puerto Vallarta is don't just focus on the Malacan. Get out and walk the cobblestone streets behind and explore. And as you get farther from the Malacan, things get less crowded, which is also a bonus. And who knows, you just might find something unique and special. Okay, moving along, we now come to the area just north of Puerto Vallarta town. This area is very close to the airport and is really two distinct areas called Marina Vallarta and Nuevo Vallarta. Marina Vallarta is a busy area with many shopping, spas, restaurants, bars, and hotels all centered around a large 500 slip boat harbor. In addition to all that, there's a championship golf course right next door. We think this area is a really nice place to stay if you don't want to stay directly in the hectic downtown zone. And pro tip, on Thursday evenings during the high season, they have a farmer's market along the Marina Promenade. Nuevo Vallarta is just north of the Marina area and the airport and has a concentration of big hotels along the beach. It's a bit like Cancun and some other places in Mexico where resorts were built directly on a beach where nothing existed before. And since most of the big resorts here are all-inclusive options, there's less in the way of truly local sites and dining and drinking options. But it's a great place to relax in the sand and get a tan. Just be aware that downtown Puerto Vallarta is a 45-minute drive away depending on traffic. Okay, the North Beach towns are next, but just a quick break here to say if you're enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up, an encouraging comment, maybe even forward it to some of your friends, and please consider subscribing to our channel for more fun, informative videos just like this one. Okay, onward to those North Beach towns. This area is the final of the four areas I mentioned earlier, which makes up the overall Puerto Vallarta and Banderas Bay area. Things here are more spread out, but I must admit, we're a little biased towards the towns in this area, 
as much of it still has some of that real Mexico feel left, meaning less crowds, more locals, and a bit more rough around the edges. There are five primary towns in this area to consider, Bucerías, La Cruz, Punta Mita, Sayulita, and San Pancho. Bucerías is first up, just north of Nuevo Vallarta. It used to be a sleepy fishing village, but over the years, it's developed into a town popular with the expat crowd, but it still retains some of its original charm. The entire town is walkable, so it's easy to check out their downtown square, the permanent flea market here, a few nice galleries, and of course, the nice long beach with its small waves, which are great for kids and stand-up paddleboarding. La Cruz is the next town up the coast and centers around a large marina where many of the tour boats depart from. Its primary beach, Manzanilla, is about five minutes north of the town square and marina, and it's known also for its calm waters, along with great food that you'll find from the beachside Palapa restaurants here. Punta Mita is next up the coast, and it's a bit more famous and well-known than the other two I just talked about, but it's got two sides. One is a big fancy master plan community with some of the nicest homes this side of Mexico, along with two high-end hotels, the Four Seasons and the St. Regis. Prepare to spend some big bucks if you're headed to the community of Punta Mita. But it's not all fancy smancy here, and right next to the master plan community is the local village of Punta de Mita. It's the smallest beachfront village you'll come to on the north coast. There's only a few streets here, but it has some decent places to stay and some surprisingly nice beachfront restaurants. And that's because a lot of the money folks from the community next door come here for dinner. From Punta Mita, it's another 30 minute drive north beyond the bay where you come to two more popular beach towns, Sayulita and San Pacho. Sayulita used to be a little known fishing village frequented by a few local bohemian and surfer types, and then it was discovered. Today, it still has some of its local charms, but it's also become very crowded with trendy folks coming for surf and parties. So if you're one of those types, you'll enjoy it. Otherwise, maybe just check it out for a day trip only. Just a few minutes further north is a similar but smaller town, officially known as San Francisco, but almost always called San Pancho. It's kind of like Sayulita's younger brother. Not as developed, more laid back than Sayulita, but another one in the making. And finally, before we leave this area, I'll give you one more hike to consider, Monkey Mountain. There's no monkeys, but it's the best hike in this area and leads one up to a beautiful coastal mountain overlook. It's a three mile round trip hike and on a clear day, there are great views for over 50 miles up and down the coast. Well, I've now covered the four areas of the Puerto Vallarta and Banderas Bay area. But I'm not done yet. I still have a few more tips to give you on some of the best day trips to consider, as well as some of the best off-the-radar local eats. First up, the best day trips. As I mentioned, there are not a ton of tour activities to do in Puerto Vallarta, but there are a few nice ones worth considering. Check out Viator or TripAdvisor for all your options, but we will give you two pro tips to consider here. Number one, skip the dedicated whale watching tours. Instead, take a Yalapa tour, a fishing excursion, or a Marietta's Island tour, as you'll see a lot of whales on any trip you take out into the bay. And our overall recommendation on the best day trip in Puerto Vallarta is that Marietta's Island trip. It's an awesome and unique experience and well worth your money. And the second pro tip here is to do the tour with Alley Cat Sailing. They're top rated on TripAdvisor and have a large deluxe boat that takes you out. And if you book direct and mention the Scottsdale Travel Chick, they'll give you 10% off. 
If you want to learn more about this trip, then check out our dedicated video. Just search Alley Cat Marietta's Island Tour. Finally, our last section here is just a bit on dining and nightlife. The little towns around the bay have their own style and feel, but for this section, I'll focus only on the Puerto Vallarta area. And in terms of nightlife, there are two primary areas. The bars and clubs along the Malacan, and the bars and clubs in the Romantic Zone. We didn't partake much, but let's just say you can't miss the options on the Malacan. And for the Romantic Zone, it's best to just walk around and follow the people. One place I can mention, which has some interesting shows, is the Palm Cabaret and Bar. It's modestly priced and a local expat favorite, so if you see something you like, just try it out. Now, let's get to some dining recommendations. I'll mention a few of the well-known trendy ones, but I think the real treat to our guide here will be the local ones that few people know about. It depends on your style, but we enjoy these local hidden options the best. For the most trendy beachside dining, head to Playa Mertos. You'll have a lot to choose from here, but La Palapas and Blue Shrimp are perhaps the most popular. And they're best for sunset meals. Pancho's Tacos is a few blocks up in the Romantic Zone, and it's said to have the best tacos in all of Puerto Vallarta. But good luck getting in. The wait is terrible every day. So our hidden recommendation here is to try El Santo Tacos just up the street. It has a much more romantic courtyard dining and the tacos are just as good. In terms of elevated dining with views out across the city and the bay, there are two options that get the press. Restaurant Barcelona Tapas and El Panorama Restaurant. But we say, Try Chez Elena for a more local option few people know about. Now, let's get to those really, really local finds that no one else is going to tell you about. If you want local, like being the only foreigners there, then check out these spots. Pepe's Tacos is one, and it's on the local side of town and a nice choice for Al Pastor Tacos. Two people can eat here for about 12 bucks. Comida Rico is another great little family pace. It has only three tables and it's in their house. And there's a limited menu, but it's great food and it's a really great experience. Loncheria Don Jorge is back in town near the river and it's a real counter service place for locals. But you're also welcome to give it a try too. What? These choices aren't rough enough? You want it so rough that you don't even have a table? Well, then grab yourself a plastic chair in the street and check out the food carts outside the Guadalajara Pharmacy. Taqueria La Horminga here is one of the best and it doesn't get any more local than these. Finally, we have one more super cool, super secret tip here. Do you like good tacos along with friendly raccoons? Well, then try out Taqueria Los Mampaches or the Raccoon Taqueria. The food is made fresh and it's inexpensive, but the highlight of this place are the resident raccoons who come out for dinner, and they can be your seatmates if you like. The Scottsdale Travel Chick tells me they have really soft hands. Well, there you have it, our ultimate visitor guide to Puerto Vallarta. Everything you need to know and some secret bonuses on top of that. We hope you enjoy. Did we miss any of your favorites or do you have a tip to share? Please let us know in the comments section below and please consider following us for more fun, informative travel videos just like this one. Until next time, see you later.